Hello and welcome to part one of a three-part series called Smoot Barn, S-M-O-O-T. Smoot is the name of a small town in western, Wy uh, western Wyoming, close to another small town called Afton. I don't know, you probably haven't heard of either of them, but it's a great place to do a plein air painting. I was in a uh, plein air painting competition last week there and just totally enjoyed it. All right, today was block in and I covered the whole canvas with value color. This was an overcast, foggy day and uh, so I'm trying to give this uh, feeling, even from the very beginning, of soft edges and more of an atmospheric day. So. The challenge here is how to make a really interesting painting with these overcast colors. I really like an overcast day because it brings out these, all these subtle colors that we're going to get into in part two and three. All right, we also introduced uh, getting the drawing sketch in, particularly when I feel comfortable with this, particularly when I have structures because I want to get my brain thinking of where, you know, I don't want my building too big, too small, I want it just right, like porridge. All right, with that, enough of me intro, let's get into today's painting. Thanks for stopping by. All right, bye-bye. A spot for all kinds of texture and barns and mountains and streams. Now, um... Today is block in, so I want to try to cover this canvas in uh, value color and shapes. And uh, for me to do that, particularly with structures I'll be introducing today, uh, to encourage you to think about uh, making some sort of a sketch. So here's my sketch. And the reason for the sketch is, particularly when I'm having buildings, well, it's a good, every good teacher I've had always talks about uh, for landscapes, do a sketch first. So here is my sketch. Now I'm very bad at this and um, so I want to encourage you to think about doing this kind of good uh, stuff because it gets your brain thinking of where those structures are going to be on this canvas. So I usually make some sort of a square in there and then go ahead and make my my drawing. I used a 6H uh, pencil and uh, got away with getting my shapes in there. So I feel confident, a little bit more confident, of where this thing should be. I'm going to leave this off to the side a little bit so I can keep an eye on it. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started with trying to figure out where these shapes are going to be. So let's make a mixing color of gray. So I have some light gray. I'm going to add just a little bit of ultra blue to it. Thin it out a little bit, and I'll be ready to go with a drawing brush. So today I'm just going to use a little worn out old Da Vinci uh, number zero or one or something pretty small. So I'm going to go right to the half point where I think the top of this uh, hill is here. And then I'm going to go down below here and show where the foreground is. So we have a lot of drawing right in this one area right here, which is about a third of the painting. So here's a half, here's a third maybe. And over here we're going to have a big tree. And over here we're going to have some structures within here. So my structures are going to start probably in this area and they're going to end with a little white building over in this area. And I'm also going to have a road that starts up here and then comes over at a little bit of an angle right there. Then we're going to have a fence coming in here. So let's I think I'm tilting here. I want to make this thing level. Okay, bring it up a little bit. 
And let's start with some building here. So we're here, here, here. It's kind of long, isn't it? I'm going to move it over a little bit. I think that's not too far off. Over here. And then I have a second building behind. And then we have a little building coming off of here. And therefore, I think I need to make this go here. Let's get this a little, just try to clean it up a little bit because of the, one of our guests are out there with their dog, their dog's name is, um, is it Trooper, and he is just a card, I'll tell you. He doesn't always like to listen to his mama in the morning. So over here we're going to have some shrubbery, tree type stuff here. And then we're going to have tree coming over here. And then a lot of tree over here. Comes up pretty high. And then over here we have kind of a tree area. Here. All right, there we go. I think I can move over here now. I think I need a bigger brush for the other side. So let me move into, looks like a number four rosemary. Let's get some more gray in there. Just a little bit of turp. And you can see you can get this thing done a lot quicker. And then over here we have some tree type stuff coming in. And there's a little bit of a scooch of a little building over here. I think I'll leave it out. And then we will go up here in this area. And there's a, some fading trees up in this area. Clean this up. My number four. Now what I want to do is, I know from being out there, there's some area back in here. This is all mountain back here. It's covered in cloud, but I'm going to put some very faint designs in here that indicate that there's trees back in here. Now I need a little bit of fence work, so I went to a, a darker gray, kind of starts over here. So I'm coming pretty high, I better get them in the right direction here. And Just kind of give some sort of indication where things are going to be. And they end up right over in that area. 
but I need a lot more little fences right in here. You know, this side of this building is so plain, I'm thinking of maybe putting some windows in it. All right, that is the drawing. So I'm going to widen my road now to here to this area right in here because my drawing's a little off. All right, I'm going to get back and look at my drawing. All right, first, I think it's a good start, and I'm ready to start applying some value color to this. Now, I got a whole bunch of gray in here, so I'm going to pick up the excess just to make sure that. All right, I had a little phone call there. Thank you very much for the interruption. And uh, we'll get back to working our shapes here. All right, so the drawing is done. And now I want to go in with some value colors. So let's start with some greens. Green gray. So here's a ultra blue. Here's a yellow ochre. Ultra blue. Yellow ochre. So it's kind of, I'm starting with the darker color within the trees. And then I'm going to go over here to this side and have some blue and transparent oxide red with a little bit of yellow ochre. So it's a little bluer, a little darker. All right, that should be enough to get me started. glasses on here and I'm going to start with my number four and get some darks in here and I'll put some darks over here There's a good dark up in here somewhere. Now I'm going to go to the to the green. It's more of an olive. And I will be. You say, why aren't you putting the yellow in yet? I'll get that later. I think it's important just to get your your base colors in first. And I'm going to get a little bit of gray in here now to the mixture. This is my light gray. And I'm going to put that up in this area, up in here. And I'm going to add more gray now. More gray. And I'm going to put some very light Texture stuff up in here. All right, what I'm going to do now is mix these two together, see if I can use them, and go into the next mixture.
So now I'm going to clean up some of this around that tile. So I have some feeling that I'm controlling my palette. I'm not having little piles of different paint. Alright, so let's start with some yellow ochre. Naples. Yellow ochre. Naples. And I'm going to get some Hansa Dark, Hansa Yellow Dark. And I need some green in there too. Let me get some from this pile. Oh, I think that's just wonderful. I think this will be a good subtle color. Remember I said I, I tried to get to the undercolors first and use that as a base because that's what happens in nature. The lights come from the darks. You just lost my fence. Some up in this tree here. A lot of yellow up in here. Thinning out some of my darker colors. And I'll put some of that in here. Okay, how's my time doing? Better turn it on and see how we're doing. 13 minutes. Ooh, ooh. I feel like a luxury here. All right, with that, I'm going to step back, have a sip of coffee, and now I'm going to use it number four. I'm going to go to that darker mixture we had. I'm going to add a little bit of the yellow here in it. And go back here and get this area in here. It seems to be a kind of a darker area up in here. Thinning it out. I'm going to get a paper towel on this. And I think it's going to be lighter. I'm going to add some lighter gray to it. Light gray, a little bit of white, white, titanium white. Titanium white. Now, I want to start going into my gray area. So let me see what I can do here with cleaning up my mixing area and going to a gray. All right, so let's start with our light gray. And this time I'm going to even lighten it up with white. And I'm going to add a little blue to it. So I'm going to add some cerulean to it. And see if that does the trick. I need more gray in it. You can make so much judgment from your, your palette, but until you put it on your canvas, that's the final judgment. 
And with this contaminated brush, I am going to see how that works. Oh, that's working pretty good. I like that. Again, I'm reminding you that this is our base that we're putting in, and it's trying to just cover as much as we can of this canvas with value colors. Please think that, you know, what I'm trying to do with most people, most of my students here in studio, is to say, look, this stuff you're doing with um, getting all that detail in is not going to help at this stage. I mean, I know we had to get a shape of a building in here, but this is not a time to be working in the trees and getting all those fine things in there. This is a time to just start working on some Big shapes, big value shapes. And keep it thin. Keep it thin. What I do is I smash it in and then pick it up. And if you're going to have a foggy day like we had, this is not a bad approach at all to have. And to unify this, I'm just using my paper towel. And now I'm going to soften some edges with a soft brush. Just to give a hint of something's going on back there. Pick up some more value down here. Pick some, some dark. And that's starting to give more of an atmospheric feeling to it. I think I need to get some, some shapes back. I'm going to do a little bit more right in here. I added some blue. Use some alter in here to just give effect a little bit more than I had. And that's what I'm doing now. And I'm going to go back with some more ultra. A little bit of gray. And add some of the blue stuff in these areas where the trees are. See how this bigger brush softens the... The surface, it's just a great tool. A little bit more. Okay, I need to finish up here by putting the road in. So I'm going to go to a little bit darker gray. And I'm mixing it in. And there we go. And since I got some of that, I'll use that up in here. And with my knife, I'm going to use that color on the side of the building. And that will be my last, I think, my next to the last thing to do. So I'm just loading up my gray right there on my knife and I'm just going to go whack, load it up again, whack, and and from the bottom I'm going to do the same. And now scrape it. Keep it thin, 
And I think I need a red, so I'm going to use a lizard and cad red. It's a little too bright, so I'm going to get some gray in it. And I'm going to put a sliver of that in with the barn behind. Right in here. And here. And here. All right, I think that is it for today. What I'm going to do off camera is probably try to bring my fence back a little bit, but um, basically leaving it pretty soft, which is a great foundation to start for part two tomorrow. All right, whew, you guys kept me busy. Plus, I had a telephone call in between, so I apologize for that interruption. Thank you so much for being part of Smoot Barn on a foggy day. All right, see you in part two.